In this class, students get a taste for what you can do with computer science and computer engineering. There's a lot of things about the capstone yeah. course this, that's fun. You, you oh, missed, so you the, missed the, the cheer, the overwhelming yes. cheer went up when we pushed this button and that light toggle yeah. was amazing. Was it's like a chance where you get to work with students one-on-one. -on -one. We're trying to do object recognition by, by tagging objects. The tags can detect if the object that they're on has moved and then we'll be pairing the, the image data. Then the hope is that we'll see you know, something moving and we'll know what it is. It's also frustrating because designing hardware can be frustrating. It's like you design a car and the wheels come off you know, the first time you try to run. And so it can be frustrating trying to figure out how to get these things to work. The first one, the cell unit, that's the most important one. That computes a match between two individual characters and sequences of DNA. So what we've got today is we got it to the point where our little unit can compute by itself a row and it can go to the next row and compute correctly. But we still haven't been able to get the um, communication between the two little units. This problem is probably something we could figure out in like the next, by the end of the week at least, at, at the latest. It's just whether or not we can get everything working together that's going to be the part, our part to finish by the end of the quarter. The other nice thing about a capstone is the students find out what they can do. All you have to do is, and I think, is if you delay the data valid signal by two cycles, then everything's going to be possible. We are implementing um, this label propagation algorithm. It's basically machine learning. You can simplify it to matrix multiplication. Normally a matrix multiplication is a row times a column, but we can only get row by row. And I was explaining how we can just simply you know, worry about doing it many times for our really, really big matrix multiplication. So the idea behind the presentation is they've spent a lot of time thinking about their project. So it's a chance for them to show off what they're doing. And also, when they talk about it, they actually have to think through it to some extent. And that actually helps them in the, in the design. And that's what's going to happen when they get out in the real world. They're going to be able to take these skills and they're going to be able to do uh, interesting projects or develop products in a wide variety of areas. What we should see is a graph that runs on. at 2 hertz right now. And as we change the speed, the graph will get wider and wider. And, get more and, more. and then it's double-sided, of course. So this is the schematic of the demo board that we're using downstairs in the lab. You might have seen it already. The biggest problem with PCB is that one change affects everything. And then moving something by even like just a half a millimeter all of a sudden makes one way of routing things you know, inadequate. We've replaced the shock fluid with Lord MRF 132DG. This is the, the circuit for the op amp and the Wheatstone bridge. Well, we're shooting to put this on the car and in a racing condition Thing can happen really quickly. We're doing fluid simulation, which is uh, using a lot of math to make it look like fluids are actually flowing in animation. So, like on a screen, maybe smoke. You see the smoke moving around like it's really in air, flowing through the wind, or a mushroom cloud, or something like that coming up. It goes through four phases. Which one, the first phase is infection, second is and then up here you can see these little dots a little bit. And they'll show where it started to move uh, before it just kind of stalled and stopped. At the very core of our design is this execution core. Um, we have a lot of different kinds of processing that has to happen during the fluid simulation. Uh, quite a few different instructions, if you will. The anti-kryptonite line uh, is basically a signal saying that during, right now when I'm getting this data, I don't want it to be parallel data, I want it to be serial data. We will have user manipulation so that uh, a user could actually add fluids and move it around. And our simulation will calculate the corresponding movement of the fluids. Oh, it's you. I'm really We have 12 of these plays throughout the basement, and this one is the 13th one. Fabulous. It looks oh. great. Okay. We're going to need a camera stop. <laughs> Red. Okay. okay. Let's turn this one on. Yes! You don't move. Okay, so my infrared beacons are kind of the first link in the chain that is tagged. We can determine roughly how far away a player is. Right now we're down to six sensor, uh, eight sensors per person. They all feed into one of the ports. The Atmega selects one of the ports and pipes that out. It just takes the data directly. The way that works is the admin station on startups 
sends out uh, a reset packet. It turns out that in the basement, uh, four moats will cover the basement uh, pretty, pretty well. The players who are in the game then figure out, ha have the ability to figure out where they are. Uh, all of it's defined in an interface, uh, so it's extremely easy to change out how you're tracking player positions. It's looking, it's looking pretty scary good. It would be nice to keep working with these students and actually do the next project, um, you know, or do more research with them.